Kung Fu movies have given the world action stars like Jackie Chan, Chuck Norris, and Jet Li. But the one to take the title of the greatest is probably Bruce Lee. Keep watching as Bruce Lee's daughter reveals the awful truth about him. Bruce Lee's Life and Career Lee Jun Fan, who later became Bruce Lee, was born in San Francisco in 1940. His family moved to Hong Kong the next year, where he began developing his skills as a child actor and martial arts student. He returned to the U.S. in 1959 to attend the University of Washington and to teach martial arts. His breakout role came in 1966 with the TV show The Green Hornet. He played the hero's partner and valet, Kato. He had finally found a role that wasn't stereotyped or shallow and was excited to play it. His other roles after that included shows and films like Longstreet, Batman, and Ironside. He was also an action choreographer on films like 1968's The Wrecking Crew. He also did a string of Hong Kong martial arts movies. The Big Boss and Fist of Fury broke box office records all over Asia and made him officially an international star. He further went behind the camera with The Way of the Dragon in 1973, a Hong Kong action film he directed, wrote, produced, and starred in. His final appearance was in 1973's Enter the Dragon. It was a box office hit in America and in Hong Kong. It's considered one of the most influential martial arts movies of all time. His Suspicious Death and Enduring Legacy Bruce Lee suddenly died at age 32 on July 20, 1973. The cause of death was ruled as a cerebral edema. He had a funeral in Hong Kong but is buried next to his son in Seattle. He was a busy man in his career and at home before his death. He was working on several projects at the time, including Game of Death. He had been married to Linda Emergy Lee for nine years. They had two children, an eight-year-old son named Brandon and a four-year-old daughter named Shannon. He was at the Hong Kong home of Taiwanese actress Betty Ting Pei, his alleged mistress, on the day of his death. His demanding schedule was enough to give anyone a headache, and he complained of one. He took a painkiller known as Equagesic, went to bed, and never woke up. An ambulance was called when he became unconscious. There was nothing they could do by the time he arrived at Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Several prominent members of the Hong Kong police went to the hospital to see him, including police chief Charles Sutcliffe. Theories about what actually caused the edema that caused his death abound. In the 70s, experts claimed he had a hypersensitivity to equagesic. That theory seems a bit strange because he had taken the pill before with no ill effects. Donald Teer, a forensic scientist assigned to the case, also denies the idea that the cannabis in his system contributed to his death. More recent studies suggest he could have had a heat stroke from overexertion. Matthew Polly wrote a biography about him and notes that he had underarm sweat glands removed in 1972. A 2022 study proposes an entirely different theory. Kidney specialists in Spain said he drank too much water, which overloaded his kidneys and led to swelling in his brain. The search to find out exactly what killed him only proves how much fans loved him and his legacy endures. Time magazine named him one of the most influential figures of the 20th century in 1999. An eight-foot statue was unveiled in Hong Kong on November 27, 2005, which would have been his 65th birthday. He even founded an entirely new discipline of martial arts known as Jeet Kune Do, which is a predecessor to today's MMA. Brandon Lee the story of Bruce's son Brandon is equally tragic and suspicious. He wanted to follow in his father's footsteps as a martial artist. He also wanted to be an actor and moved to Seattle with his mother and sister after his father's death. Brandon's first film was the Cantonese film Legacy of Rage in 1986. Others included the made-for-TV film Kung Fu the Movie, Laser Mission in 1990, Showdown in Little Tokyo in 91, and Rapid Fire in 1992. 1994's The Crow was his ninth film. It came when his career was on the rise, and it was meant to make him a breakout star. He died on the set of that film, March 13, 1993, at age 28. He was fatally wounded at the hands of what was supposed to be a prop gun. It was meant to be loaded with blanks, but no one checked it in between takes, so it had a real bullet instead. The death was ruled accidental, and it wasn't even the only accident on the set. Brandon's was another mysterious and tragically early death in the Lee family line. Fortunately, there are still family members left to honor him and his father's legacy. Who is Shannon Lee? 
Bruce's daughter, Shannon, may not be the most famous member of the family. She's a wife and mother who married Ian Kiesler and had a daughter, Wren, in 2003. She's also a producer, actor, and businesswoman. She hopes the world can learn from her brother's senseless death and encourages mandatory gun safety training on film sets. It's primarily Shannon who continues on her father's legacy. She founded the nonprofit Bruce Lee Foundation. It creates summer camps where children can learn about his philosophy and develop their martial arts skills. Shannon is also making sure her father's legacy continues for generations. Ren is now in charge of the Bruce Lee Snapchat account. All of this effort to keep Bruce's dreams alive didn't mean she wanted to follow in his footsteps right away. Taking up her father's specialized method of martial arts was originally too painful for both of Bruce's children. Shannon eventually did it as a way to feel closer to him. Entering the world of Hollywood was also too painful at first, especially after the death of her brother. That was until she found a story that her father had envisioned in his personal items after his death. It was called Warrior, a crime drama that takes place in San Francisco's Chinatown. She was interested in bringing it to life and then found Justin Lin to help her. There are currently three seasons of the show that you can watch on the streaming service Max. What does Shannon think? Shannon may not have vivid memories of her father because she was only four when he died, but she still feels close to him. She can feel his energy around her and remembers how wonderful it felt whenever he gave her the slightest bit of attention. She went deeper into her feelings on the official Warrior podcast, a companion piece to the show Warrior 50 years after his death. The Awful Truth the awful truth she feels the need to reveal is that the world misunderstands her father's legacy. She's criticized once upon a time in Hollywood for portraying him as a dispensable stereotype. The character was an insensitive alpha male. He was also hyper-competitive. Shannon says that this couldn't have been more different from the way her father was in real life, even if the world thought he was. She feels that the worst misunderstanding the world has about Bruce is that the action star was hyper-masculine. It's an issue many action stars face. His physical strength was undeniable, but he wanted to challenge typical ideas. There was so much more that he wanted to show the world through his roles than being a man who could beat up a bunch of baddies. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Bruce Lee? Let us know in the comments section below.